Somebody asked me the other day, why do I have music in my new novel, Cairo One and More? Well, it's a good question. I mean, you're reading a book and somebody uh, starts to talk about a particular piece of music, but you can't hear it because you've only got the words to, to read. So I used several pieces of music to really help set the mood in a particularly, particularly sombre scenes in the book. I'll give you a couple of examples, um, and the music is quite varied. Um, at one point in the book, I have my heroine, Zuzu, who's an Egyptian woman. She's in exile in damp London, and she's living in a bedsit, and all she's thinking about is the sunshine in California, which is where she really wants to be. And she plays, she's singing over and over that Roberta Flack uh, song, Killing Me Softly. And what I'm trying to do there is to sort of set a mood where it's London that's killing her softly. It's the rain, it's the depressing streets and so on. Even though in the original song, uh, uh, it was uh, what was killing the person softly was the performance of a, of a singer in a, in a nightclub. So in that case, what I kind of hope is that Almost anybody who reads the book knows that song, and in a way they can sing along while they're reading that particular paragraph, if they, if they feel like it. The more exotic uh, bits of music work in a different way. Um, at one point in the book, um, I use a piece of music by Umm Kulthum, who's really the most famous Arab singer ever. The old lady died some years ago, but she was greatly revered in the Arab world. And I use that again to set a scene of desolation and gloom. The book's not all gloom and desolation, but I use it in this case. But for my English-speaking readers and people who don't know this particular song, you can't sing it along in, in your head. And so I've used a bit of flowery writing to try to uh, describe what the song could sound like. And if you're really desperate to hear it, then there's a YouTube link and you can sort of go along and listen to this particular particular song. Um, a third example, and again it's um, a, a slightly gloomy scene, um, I have a couple of characters um, who end up incarcerated together. They don't like each other very much, and but they're going to be around for a while. And I've tried to find some way that I could, as a sort of icebreaker, so that they could make some sort of emotional contact with each other and so I tried to use uh, to do, to use uh, music and I chose a particular piece of music it's a, 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 a choral piece by Bach um, and it's used in the old Soviet movie of Solaris not the not the American uh, remake the, the Soviet one was much better to my mind and in that particular uh, movie. There was this piece of Bach that had been rearranged by Artemiev, a, a Russian composer, and it's a particularly haunting bit of music. So what I, I do is I have one of the characters starts to hum this piece of music, and the other one recognises it and says, hey, isn't that Bach? Isn't that... I don't, and I've heard that arrangement, but I don't know where, it's, where I've heard it from. And then it transpires that they've both seen the film Solaris, which gives them an opportunity to then uh, sort of enrich the relationship of two people who've been incarcerated. So um, essentially using music is kind of complicated. Uh, you have to take into account what the reader might know or what might not know. But the great thing nowadays, especially with an ebook edition, is that you can just pop a YouTube link uh, at the end of the book and if you uh, really want to, then you can click on YouTube and you can sing along while you're, while you're reading.